medication free, pain free, depression free, you know, dis ease free, living in the ease of my healthy body and in the ease of total freedom, knowing that I can hold on to that again and again, you know, knowing that the struggle is over, just like G said. But I would encourage y'all to write this type of thing down. Look at the way she's mapped this out. Um, you know, some people are just smart, aren't they? I'm, I'm really not one of those people. That <laughs> but she really is. And um, she's talking about, I'm concerned, things I need to work on. I'm concerned about winter. Winter eating raw has been a challenge for me. I'm naturally cold. Me too. And moving to Florida is a large part of what has assisted me to stay warm. Y'all, it gets so cold here. I've thought about that so many times. I don't belong in this climate. Um, I have implemented my new skills and struggle and structure long enough for them to truly be a habit. I know I still have the potential to backslide and need to remain vigilant. This is so true. And I see this happen to people and they think, why did I, why did I? But, you know, Karen and I were talking about that. Like over the reset, she had like one time she went out to eat um, in the last reset with a, a Celine Dion concert and she was deathly sick after that. I, I don't even think she ate that bad, but it really took a toll on her. And then during this reset, one time she had like two of those little candy, pumpkin candy corns, and she stopped herself and thought, what am I doing? It was just a natural reaction, and, and she caught herself at two. And she could tell she didn't even feel good just, just with the two, but um, she stopped herself. But back in the day, before, you know, uh, that would have, have trickled into a huge binge. Of a, of a not being able to be perfectly imperfect, uh, of a having to stay to that all or nothing, like, okay, get a hold of it. It was two or three candy corn pumpkins, you know? It wasn't then I trickled into a week-long binge and I've lost all my results and can't even find my way back. Like, that's a big deal, you know, staying on top of your game and remaining vigilant, um, which is a great word. So I want to post in the group today for y'all. Um, I'll post it in the comments under this this uh, thread, this video of um, staying raw in winter. I have a couple of videos on that, that that I think are pretty good with several tricks and tips. One thing is obviously not eating cold food. I don't drink cold smoothies in the winter. I just don't. Um, I, my battery's low, I don't, um, I don't have banana and ice cream, I don't, um, and I'm going to be coming up talking about some soups and different things, and I put in the, in a, the group yesterday some savory smoothies, which I am talking about how to use those in the day, and having a little dates in those for calories or mangoes or that kind of thing or having them at night, and you can blend those up to warm, but they're still raw. Um, also, warm teas are a big, big deal to me, too. I love teas that help me manage, like, my gut health and all, too, like ginger and um, ginger lemon. I like hibiscus tea. I like fennel tea. I like peppermint tea. All these different things. Um, putting warming spices in your food, like cayenne, ginger, that kind of rev rev up the metabolism and the heat in your system are big kickers for me too like you could be sweating okay um also dressing according like right now it's about 75 outside but where my house sits under all these trees it's cold in here like i have goosebumps normally when it is winter time i wear cuddle duds under all my clothes i wear cuddle dud pants and cuddle dud shirt i always have them on and it like keeps me warm. It really is a big deal to me. I dress um, t for warmth. I do that. I wear layers and um, and I've gotten to where I, I buy like thin jackets and I like to buy really good quality things that I am comfortable in wearing, you know, around the house or different things. Um, 
that, that feel like they're just right on me. So I don't mind how it doesn't feel like I'm binding and bulky. It's just like a light extra layer on me. So I do that. So I'm going to, um, to post those videos in, in this link, um, under this video. She also said travel, travel is feasible, but still most definitely my biggest challenge. I need to continue working on this. Okay, well, just like those videos I put, like Raw Vegan Goes Out to Eat, I put those in the thread. If you didn't see them, you can type in on my search bar on my channel, Raw Vegan Goes Out to Eat, Raw Vegan Goes Out to Dinner, that kind of thing, and I'm showing you how I do it. But uh, Karen and I were also talking about the simplicity. You know, when I go out of town or I go somewhere different, I eat even more simply. I always bring green powder and I always bring chia seeds. Therefore, I can have those in my water, and if I need to live off bananas wrapped in romaine, so be it. Like, I'm I'm out of town doing something different. You know, I'm on a mission, or I'm on a, a meet and greet, or I'm on a little vacation. Not that that happens often, but you see what I'm saying. I can always get that at any grocery store. I can always just eat greens and fruit, and I can always get my healthy fat from those chia seeds. And I can amp up my nutrition with green powders. It's that dang simple. And if you need to go out to eat with people, watch those videos that are called Raw Vegan Goes Out to Eat. And um, I think I posted some of those last week in the group. So, um, yeah, because you can go in, you can look at the menu, and you can really, um, I, I'll post that again, okay, in, in this, in, in the comments on this video, okay? Sometimes it's easier for me to find things because I know like what the tag picture looks like for the one I'm trying to direct you to. Um, but you can look on the menu, you can order what they have there in its raw state. If you need to throw an avocado in your pocketbook and bring it with you and open that thing up and eat half squeezed on your salad and squeeze lemon or lime juice on there and mash it onto your salad with some very moist like, maybe they had pineapple on the salad bar, maybe they had, um, lots of beautiful tomatoes or whatever. But you are going out to dinner, you know, for the experience. You can always eat when you leave there, but I really find that I can usually get full most places. Um, but I, I also am not in that state where I think, oh, if I don't eat every hour like I'm going to, I, I can really, I'm not driven around by any, It's like a toxic food call, you know what I mean, where it's not true hunger. And if I am truly hungry, I will experience that as like in the back of my throat. It will be like a, a thirst, but not, qu not quite. And I know that feeling, but I'm not driven around by gnawing um, hunger pains, by the smell of food, by, you know, toxins kicking up like salt and that kind of thing. I'm just not. I am free of that freedom in, in its highest, you know? Um, I can't believe I've caught you at a time of day that nobody is on here. Uh, so maybe I'll try to pop back in later to say hey, but um, I wanted to say that. And, and she said, she, I'm, I'm reading this and pointing this out because she had a lot of good points that I thought would help everybody else out. I need to continue to work on recipes and habits that work for my dietary requirements and give me the flexibility and variety I need to remain successful. And um, that that's true for everybody. Um, she said, I love and appreciate you. And you have made a most definite, positive, life-changing impact in my life. That's really nice. That's really, that's really meaningful to me. Um, I told Christopher, <laughs> We were talking and you know, when when you, you're talking to somebody, like I've talked to a lot of people that are doctors and different things and tried to coach them and work with them or naturopaths or people that just can't even find their way, like they, they don't know. And it makes you feel like, are you gonna have like contradictory advice to them or are they gonna, but she said uh, that I, I haven't said anything that, that made her cringe, which was, just made my heart grow five times that day and I told Christopher that he thought it was funny. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to address that, but, but you know, continuing to work on the recipes and habits that work for you, you know, just like, um, 
everybody has different situations and everybody's challenges are the hardest ones to them. You know why? Because it's their challenges, right? And, um, and yeah, I just want to say that. I want to say I love you and we're going to be keeping this group intact. If anybody would like to step up and let me know that they would like to, um, kind of be the monitor of this group, um, I, I won't be popping in on it all the time. I will remain a member and pop in occasionally, but I just cannot manage everything. And um, So don't expect that, but do expect that people will continue to come, continue to post. You can continue to scroll down and see all of the beautiful videos that we had together, all of the posts. I mean, I think that's that the content in this group is very valuable, you know, and it's valuable to this group. And I'm not going to have a group where I bring everybody that's kind of graduated through my reset into one big group because it will grow too big and the intimacy of that group won't be the same. Like, people wouldn't know that um, what Ginger went through or, or people wouldn't know like um, just different things like, like we were laughing about. Um, about Angel and the and the mulch and the potty situation, like it just is. It's just it's just us here, you know. So I think that's the importance of it and having the accountability. If you want to post and you can continue to post whatever you would like, you know. And um, and the thing is, not n no one. Um, I'll move it to a secret group so it can't even be found and. Um, no one will be able to see the content. You know, no one will be able to. That would be so unfair if people came on to this and saw all of our content and y'all paid to be here and, and to do this and they didn't. And that would be, I don't like it when things are unfair like that, you know. But um, anyway, so I might pop back in later if I have anything else to say. But I just want to tell you that I wanted to... Um, I wanted to encourage you to maybe like like G has done, writing a little summary analysis, you know, for yourself. And maybe it's more elaborate or less elaborate than this, and yours would clearly be different, but I think the way she has this laid out is is beautiful. Like I want to jot this down because I would like to suggest it to people, you know, as something they have in their journals. And you know, you might could even have like like in your journal every two weeks, like it's a check-in, like it's a reassessment of yourself, of what things are working and aren't working for you and how you may need to adjust. So anyway, um, we'll close with a little music and uh, and I'll be coming to y'all on Saturday and Sunday too, you know, because it ain't over till it's over, right? <laughs> Because weekends were made for fun. <laughs> and I wanna have fun. Love y'all. Bye.